Tonight's topic is uh, is called complainers and murmurers. That's tonight's topic. Complainers and murmurers. Let's open up with the book of Luke. Let's open up with the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Hold on. Is somebody else on unmute? Okay, let me do the sister. Okay, uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Tonight's topic again is called murmurers and complainers. Okay, Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Let's start there. Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Mm -hmm. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Read that again, verse 44. Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Mm -hmm. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. You see what Christ the is son of He says, let these sayings be, he says, let these sayings sink down in your ears. What is he saying? He's saying, give me that in Revelation 13, verse 9. This is what he's saying right here. Okay. Let all the sayings, the sayings that are written in the Bible, they must sink in your ears, meaning in your spiritual ears. Okay. Revelation 13, verse 9. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. Mm -hmm. If any man have an ear, let him hear. You see what he's saying? If any man had an ear, let him hear. Let these sayings sink in your ears. You understand? They must sink in your spirit. In order for them to sink in your spirit, watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 6, verse 37. This is how these sayings will sink in your spirit. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 37. Watch this. You know what? Start at verse 36. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 36. Mm -hmm. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes times unto him, and let thy foot with the steps of his door. Read verse 36 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 36. Go ahead. And if thou seest the man of understanding, get thee at times unto him, and let thy foot where the steps of his door. Now, this goes into what? This goes into counsel. This goes into asking questions. You understand? Because in order for you to ask questions, you need to be studying. You understand? You need to be applying. Is not just studying, is applying because the purpose of you studying is so you can apply what you studied. Okay? It says, and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. You understand? So there, there are brothers and sisters that are asking questions regularly because I can see they are studying, they are applying themselves. But some, they are asking questions just for the sake of asking questions, but they are not applying none of the things that they are asking about. You understand? So these sayings will not be sunk in your spirit. These sayings are not going to sink in your spirit. You understand? Read. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord mm -hmm. and meditate continually in his commandments. You see that thing? Meditate. You must meditate continually in the commandments of the Most High. Go ahead. He shall establish thine heart mm -hmm. and your give mind. thee wisdom you will establish your mind. You mean what? Watch this. Give me Sarah 5. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 is 10. He says, he will establish your mind. You know what? Start of verse 9. This eye is going to establish your mind. Okay. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Mm -hmm. We know not with every wind. Mm -hmm. And go not into every way. For so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue. You see that thing? So it says, win or not, meaning don't be double mind, don't be tossed to and fro. Because the Most High will not establish your mind if you are tossed to and fro. You see what he's saying? It says, win or not with every wind and go not into every way. You understand? In spirit, they call it Matia Jaoti. You, wherever you just listen to whatever, you don't sit down to analyze what is being said. You just listen to them. You read it on the internet. You hear it, on, wherever you hear it, then is the truth to you. Because guess what? This is the problem. Verse 10, go ahead. Be steadfast in thy understanding mm -hmm. and let thy word be the same. You see what he's saying? Be steadfast. 
Be steadfast, meaning be rooted and grounded in your understanding and let thy word be the same. Because the word that's supposed to be same in your mind is the word of God, because it doesn't change. You understand? So that's how the Lord is going to establish your heart. He's going to establish your mind. The only way for you to be established by the Most High, you must meditate. As you are meditating, the word of the Lord will be sunk in your spirit. Okay? And it will make manifest in your actions. Go back to Sarah 6 now, verse 37 again. Read that again. Ecclesiastes, the 6, verse 37. Read. Let thy mind be upon the ordinance of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. Mm. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. You see what he's saying? He says he's going to establish your heart and give you wisdom at your own desire. Because the Lord is not going to give you wisdom if you don't desire it. And you have to work for it. It's not for free. It's not going to land on your lap. You have to sit down and study. You understand? Watch this. Because what we need to understand, a lot of the times, um, brothers just think that um, all I have to do, I just have to watch a video. I don't have to sit down and study. Okay? No, you're just fooling yourself. You have to sit down and act. That's why it says, blessed be he that readeth. You study, you apply what you are reading. Watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse... Verse 26, Sarah 126, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 26. Mm -hmm. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. You see that thing? If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments. You desire the wisdom of the Lord, it says keep the commandments, and the Lord will give her unto you. It's not if or maybe, it will happen if you believe. Meaning, if you show your belief by your works, then the Lord will give it unto you. Okay? Let's go back to Luke 9 now. Verse 44 again. Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Mm -hmm. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Meaning what? Let's talk about his crucifixion because many don't be, didn't believe it. Because they didn't believe the words that were spoken by the prophets before him. You understand? They didn't believe it. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Jude. Jude verse 4. Let's start there. Jude verse 4. The book of Jude verse 4. Mm -hmm. For there are certain men crept in on the ways who were, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Go ahead. And godly men mm -hmm. turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Read. And denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. And our Lord Jesus Christ. Read verse 4 again. The book of Jude, chapter 4. Chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For there are certain men crept in and aways. You stop right well, there. He says, they, hold on. He says, there are certain men crept in unawares. Meaning there are, there's brothers and sisters that have come in into the camp and we are unaware of why they're here. That's what the Lord is. That's what Jude is saying. You understand the spirit of Christ. There are certain men crept in unawares. Okay. Who were, of, who were, be, who were, who, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Meaning the second coming of Christ, the judgment. Ungodly men, he says, these men that have crept in unawares, these are ungodly men, okay? Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, meaning what? Evil sexual deviancy, evil sexual desires, you understand? And denying the only Lord, uh, the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to deal with that. It says, crept in unawares, ungodly men, okay? Watch this. Give me Galatians 2 verse 4. Galatians. Chapter 2, verse 4. Read that. Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. Come on. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in. You see that thing? Because of false brethren unawares brought in. False brethren. That's the same false brethren. That's the same men that have crept in unawares that the apostle Jude is addressing. You understand? The apostle Paul is addressing the same thing. 
that the apostle Jude was the apostle Jude was addressing. Read verse four again. Galatians chapter two verse four. Mm -hmm. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, read, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, read, that they might bring us into bondage. You see what he's saying? He says that because of false brethren unawares, they have crept in unawares into the congregation. We are unaware of them. Both men and women, it's not just the men, they're women as well. You understand? He says brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty. The liberty is talking about what? The grace we have in Christ. Because the grace is teaching us to do what? To get ourselves together. So as we are getting ourselves together, he says there are certain men and women that have crept in unawares, you understand, to spy privily to spy out our liberty. He says, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Now, what is the bondage? Remember, we are in captivity. You understand? We are in captivity. So they want to keep us in captivity. They want to hinder our progress. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Philippians chapter 1. Philippians 1 verse 15. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15. Come on. Some indeed pre preach Christ, even of envy and strife. Mm -hmm. And some also of goodwill. Okay, so read that verse 15 again. I need you to read faster. Come on. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. And some also of goodwill. You see what he's saying? He says, some indeed. So these false brethren, these men that have crept in unawares, you understand? It says, some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. So meaning what? He's saying there's some brothers that have come in, in the congregation, guess what? They don't teach because they're above the people. No, they teach because they teach out of envy. They teach out of strife. They envy other brothers and sisters in the congregation. They are not teaching because they believe that this is the God, the true gospel of Christ. No. It's because in the world, you were looking for fame. Now you're in Israel. Now you think you can use the Bible to get fame. You see that thing? So read that again. Verse 15. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. Come on. And some also of goodwill. And some also they teach of goodwill. You understand? Those brothers and sisters that they are generally just doing the work. You understand? They are not moving in the spirit of envy or to cause strife. Okay, go ahead. The one preach Christ of, of contention, not sincerely, mm -hmm. supposing to add affliction to my bonds. You see what he's saying? He says, the one preach Christ of contention not sincere. They are not doing it in sincerity and in truth. No, they are doing it because they want to be seen. They are doing it because they have the spirit of envy and strife on them. Okay. It says what? Supposing to do what? Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. You see what he's saying? So the reason why they do it is to add affliction to our bonds. Meaning what? We are, in cap we are already in captivity. You understand? So because they are not aware of what's going on around them. They are not aware of the conditions of the battle. They are not aware of the, the, the problems our people is in. Okay? So now it says, supposing to add afflictions to my boat. Now you are rocking the boat. You are just cre creating more problems for us. You understand? That's what he's saying. You are adding to the weight. We're already, we're, we're, already have, we're already dealing with issues in captivity. Now you want to add instead of what? Instead of being an asset, you become what? You become a Jew as a scariot. Okay, go ahead. But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. You see what he's saying? But the other of love, meaning some, some brothers, they teach for love. Because I see when brothers teach, I review videos. Some brothers, when they teach, I can see this brother is teaching out of love. Knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel, they want to defend the gospel. But some brothers, when they teach, I can see he is not doing it out of sincerity. He wants to be seen. You understand? Crept in unawares. You see that thing? So the things that the Apostle Paul was dealing with back then, guess what? Those are the things that we're going to deal with this day. Okay? 
Because those same people back, those same evil spirits back then, those same evil spirits are back today. And they are here to just cause problems. Not to add, but to what? To add, to add, to add afflictions to our bonds. You understand? It's bad enough that we're in slavery, we're catching hell left, right, and center. No, they just want to add and cause problems. Okay? Watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Read what you got. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Read. In journeyings often, mm -hmm. in perils of waters. You see that perils... thing? It says, hold on. In journeyings often, the journeys, meaning the travels, we go to different places to teach the gospel. In perils of water, the apostle Paul, because well, they have to sail to go to different cities to teach the gospel. Right now, the waters now is talking about what? It's talking about the nations. Give me that in Isaiah 17. Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 12. Isaiah chapter 17, verse 12. Come on. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas mm -hmm. and to the rushing of, the na of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. You see that thing? So these nations, the Lord is comparing them to the rushing of mighty waters. He says in perils of waters, because why these nations, their job is to make sure that we don't wake up. We don't rise up again. We don't become the power of the earth. Okay. Go back to 2 Corinthians 11 verse 26 again. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 26. Mm -hmm. In journeyings often, in perils of waters. Read. In perils of robbers. In perils of robbers. The robbers, guess what? Guess, guess who the robbers are? Watch this. Because Christ talked about this thing. Give me John 10. Okay. Give me John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and verse 7. Let's start there. You know what? Start at verse... Start at verse 1. Hmm. Start of verse 1. John 10 verse 1. Let's read that. John chapter 10 verse 1. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. You see what Christ is saying? He says, the same is a thief and a robber. If you come up some other way, you want to creep in unawares, you understand? You are doing it out of envy and strife. The Lord is saying you are the same as a thief and a robber. Because guess what they are doing? The, this, let me show you the robbery that they are doing. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts. Okay? Give me the book of Acts, chapter 20. Acts 20, verse 28. Watch this. Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Come on. Take heed therefore unto yourselves mm -hmm. and to all the flock. Meaning the Over congregation, the, witch. the flock, the congregation, the nation of Israel. Read. Over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers mm -hmm. to feed the church of God. To feed which the he, church of God. Uh -huh, come on. To feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Because Christ died to purchase us from the old covenant to the new covenant. You understand? Now, being, that, that being said, watch this. Next verse. Verse 29, mm -hmm. for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, Go not ahead. sparing the flock. You see what he's saying? He says, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Because guess what? Me, I'm very observant. I observe how brothers deal with one another. I, I see how that brother deals with that brother. I see how that brother deals with this brother right here. I see how it goes. You understand? So guess what? I'm, I'm, I have to be very protective of the flock for good reason, because it's written. It must be done. You understand? Certain brothers, they cannot be set over the congregation yet because their minds is not right here. Their minds is not correct. You see that they are not going to spare the flock. Okay? They're going to destroy the flock. I see it when we are at camp. I see it. 
that this brother is not ready, this one. Okay. Read that again. Verse 20, verse 29. Acts chapter 20, verse 29. Read. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not mm -hmm. sparing the flock. Not sparing the flock because the apostle Paul was going to what? He was going to be put to death and so forth. Read. Also of your own selves shall men arise, mm -hmm. speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. You see what he's saying? Is as also of your own selves, meaning among the congregation, right? Is as shall men arise, speaking perverse things. Things that are not really lining up with the scriptures, okay? To draw away disciples after them. That's the thief and the robber. The whole objective is to draw away disciples after them. You understand? Because I'm already seeing it. There are some brothers, they are already, they, they have that spirit on them. You understand? And they already have people that are looking to them. I'm already picking this up. I'm picking that thing up. You understand? But me, I'm not going to listen. The most that God will put this, the most, the spirit of the Lord is here. You understand? Don't get it twisted. Do not get it twisted. I'm watching you. Okay? Read again. Verse 30. Acts chapter 20, verse 30. Read. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things. Go ahead. To draw away disciples after them. To draw away disciples after them. That's the whole point of this. So that they can draw away disciples after them. They, they, they don't want to sit down and study. They don't want to apply what is written in the book but they want to draw away disciples after them. You understand? Make crept in unawares. You understand? Because when you look at history, there's a movie called The Black Messiah, right? That movie of Fred Hampton, when you watch that movie, right, you see that Thomas O'Neill, he, 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 he started to, be, to make himself very close to Fred Hampton. And he learned all the secrets, he learned all the secrets of their meetings, where they're going to be at, what they're discussing, and guess what he was doing? He was reporting back to the FBI. When they came in to kill Fred Hampton, they knew where exactly he was sleeping, what side of the bed he's in, what, ty what, type of, what, type, what, what side of the room the bed is sitting in. They knew all the details. You understand? Thomas O'Neill, that black ashy demon he was. That was the Judas Iscariot, okay? Judas and the Black Messiah, I think. That's the name of the movie, right? Okay, yes, sir. go back to where he was at now. Go back to, um, go back to Matthew. Go, go back to John 10. John 10 verse 1 again. John chapter 10 verse 1. And guess what? Who was Fred Hampton? Fred Hampton was the Messiah in the movie. Okay. Thomas O'Neill was Judas. You see the thing? So what did Thomas O'Neill do? do? He was very close to the leadership. You understand? Read what you got. John 10 verse 1. Read it. John chapter 10 verse 1. Go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth by the door into the sheepfold. No, no. He that entereth not. Read that again. John chapter 10 verse 1. Read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climb up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. The same is a thief and a robber. And guess what? I've seen this before in the camp. I've seen it before. You understand? Now I'm already seeing it's a recycled demon. Now that demon is popping up again. You understand? Keep going. Read verse 2. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. But he that enter in, entereth in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. Because that door, what is that door making reference to? Give me Matthew 7, verse 13. Matthew, chapter 7. Okay. But he that entereth in by the door, he does not want to come, he will not gonna, he's not going to come some other way. He's going to keep it straight. He's going to come in straight. Watch this. Matthew, chapter 7. Okay, verse 13. This is the door that Christ is talking about. Read. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. Mm-hmm. Enter ye in at the straight gate. You see that thing? That straight gate is the door he's making reference to in John 10. Read. For wide is the gate, mm -hmm. and broad is the way, Read. that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go, the, which go in thereat. 
You see what it's saying? It says for it says what? For wide is the gate and what? For wide is the gate and broad is the way. You see my Bible now, I can't see it properly. For wide is the gate and broad is the way. Uh, you see what? And that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there. Crept in unawares to draw away disciples after them. They're going to go to the white gate because all of that is leading to destruction. That path is leading to destruction. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. Because straight is the gate mm -hmm. and narrow is the way which Wait. leadeth unto life. Mm -hmm. And few they be that find it. Few and few they be that find it. That's what says the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Because those labor, those few laborers, they are the ones that are going to find the path to life. You understand? They're going to enter in by the door. But guess what? But the thief and the robber, they're going to climb in some other way. They're going to creep in unawares. You understand? They're going to do the Thomas O'Neill thing. Watch that. The same thing the Apostle Paul is explaining, same thing that Jude is explaining. Okay? Christ is explaining the same thing. They were all speaking one thing. Go back to John 10, verse 2 again. John chapter 10, verse 2. Mm -hmm. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The shepherd of the sheep will enter in through the door. The door is the straight gate. Let's get the straight gate. Give me that in 2 Esther chapter 7. Okay, 2 Esther chapter 7, verse 21. The straight gate. 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 21. Come on. For God had given straight commandments to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they and what they should observe to avoid punishment. So the straight gate is the commandments. The straight gate is the commandments. The, sh the, the, the true shepherd will come through through that door, through that straight gate. Keeping of the commandments, because if they are keeping the commandments, they're going to know how to spare the flock. They will not destroy the flock. They will spare the flock. They will protect the flock. And guess what? That's exactly what we're going to do. Protect the flock. You understand? We will do it. Go back to where he was at now. John 10. Okay. Verse 3. John chapter 10, verse 3. Mm -hmm. To him, the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice. And he called his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Go ahead, come on. And when he puts it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And mm -hmm. the sheep follow him. And they know his voice. You see that thing? And they know for they know his voice because they know his voice. So verse three and four is saying the same thing. You understand? So Christ is talking about himself here. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And a stranger will they not follow, Read. but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. For they know not the voice of strangers, because the voice of Christ is what? The commandments. Okay, jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. My sheep hear my voice, Read. and I know them, and they follow me. You see what thing? It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Because the sheep is going to follow the shepherd because they know the voice of Christ. What is the voice of Christ? Give me that in Deuteronomy 27. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 10. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 10. Read. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So the voice of the Lord our God is his commandments. The voice of the Most High God, the voice of Christ is the commandments. Read that again, verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 10. Read. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So the commandments and the statutes, guess what? That right there is the voice of the Lord our God. Okay? So go back to John now. John 10, 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. Read. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
So the voice of Christ is the commandments. You understand? So the true shepherd of the sheep, guess what they will do? They'll come through the door, the straight gate, which is the commandments of the Most High God. Then the sheep will follow because they'll hear the voice of Christ, which is the Bible, as it is written. Okay? Now, go back. Uh, go back to where he was at. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 again. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Read. In journeyings often, mm -hmm. in perils of waters, Read. in perils of robbers. So the robbers now translates into what? Those men that creep in unawares to draw away disciples after them. Go ahead. In perils by my own countrymen. You see that thing? In perils by my own countrymen. Who's the own? Who's the countrymen? The brethren that crept crep in unawares. Hold this. Go back to Galatians 2. Galatians 2 verse 4 again. Galatians 2 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Meaning what? They don't want us to wake up. They don't want us to come out of captivity. Okay? By the way they move and the things they do. Okay, go back to 2 Corinthians 11, verse 26 again. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 26. Read. In journeyings often, in mm. perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, my own people, in, read. In perils by the heathen. By the other nations, okay, come on. In perils in the city. Wherever we go to teach, whether it's Midrand, Pretoria, Sentin, wherever, Soweto, so on and so forth, Pretoria, read. In perils in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. In perils in the sea. Read. In perils among false brethren. You see, he's saying it again. He keeps repeating this thing again over and over. You see that thing? In perils by uh, in perils among false brethren, men that have creeping men that have crept in unawares. You know, English is not our first language. Men that have crept in unawares, you understand, to draw away disciples after them, that they, they might what spy out our liberty. You understand? The same thing that you were you was experiencing back then as a people during the time of Rome and so forth, during the time in the wilderness with Moses, with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So it is today. Watch this. Give me Luke 20, verse 20. Okay? Luke chapter 20, verse 20. Luke chapter 20, verse 20. Come on. And they watched him mm -hmm. and sent forth spies. They did what? Which should... And sent forth spies. And they watched him. You see that part right there? They watched him. Meaning what? Where do they watch us? They watch us on YouTube. They watch us on our website. Okay. They be watching. They watch us in the congregation. And they watched him. Read that again. Luke chapter 20 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And they watched him. And sent forth spies. Which should feign themselves just men. You see that thing? We should feign. To feign means to fake. They will fake themselves just men. As though they believe. They have fringes on. They have a beard on. They've got dresses on. They've got head wraps. But guess what? They are here to do what? To spy out our liberty. Read. That they might take hold of his words. Stop right there. That they may what? That they might take hold of his words. That they might take hold of his words. Meaning the things you say in their minds, okay, I'm going to use this against him. I'm going to use this against her. I'm going to do this. You see, to take hold of his words. Read. That they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. Because they are spies. Because they are spies. They get paid. They are not the, they are not the shepherd. What, what are these people? They are, they are paid to do this. They are not here because they love, the, they love the truth. They love the nation of Israel. Mm -mm. They are here because they are just biding the time. They are just waiting for something to pop off. And they're going to say, you see, you see, you see. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Any excuse to pop off, that's exactly what's going to happen. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. You understand? They're just sitting, they're just biding the time here. Yeah. Waiting for 
quote unquote evil to happen. And then once it pops up, they pop up as well. You understand? And they're going to be saying, yeah, you see, I told you. Yeah, you see, I told you. You see, remember what I, listen, the, all of this is happening because they are just biding the time. They are just waiting for us to fail. That's the point. There's some brothers and sisters that come in, they just want, they are waiting for us to fail. Yeah. You'll be wrong about that. The mission is a go. Okay. Read that again, verse 20. Luke chapter 20, verse 20. Read. And they watched him mm -hmm. and sent forth spies, Come which on. should feign themselves just men. Go ahead. That they might take hold of his words, that, that so they might deliver him unto the power and the authority of the governor. Because they are, guess what they are? They are hirelings. They are hirelings. They are hired to do a job. You understand? They only work for money, for a reward. And that reward is not the benefit of the nation. No, it's for their own ungodly lusts. And we're going to read about that because Jude is going to explain those things. Watch this. Go back to Jude. Go back to John. Okay, there's something I want to touch in there. John 10. John chapter 10. Read verse 7 for me. John chapter 10 verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. He is the door of the sheep. He is the door. That, give me that in John 14. He says, I am the door of the sheep. Okay. John 14 and verse 6. Read that. John chapter 14, verse 6. Come on. Jesus saith unto him, mm -hmm. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Go ahead. No man, no man cometh unto the Father by, but by me. You see what he's saying? He's the door. He is the door. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He is the law. He was the law. He was, he, guess what? He was the word made flesh. He walked among us and we handled him. We touched him. You understand? Because he magnified the law when he walked the earth. So that when he's gone, we can walk after his footsteps. You understand? Also to magnify the law and make it honorable. You understand? Go back to John 10. John chapter 10 and verse 8. John chapter 10, verse 8. Read. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, mm. but the sheep did not hear them. Be, but the sheep did not hear them. Watch this. Go ahead. Those, guess what? Those sheep, the sheep that hear the thieves and the robbers, they were not supposed to be in the first place. They were here to use, for, to, they were here to, to what? To become an example to others of what not to do. Go ahead. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved mm -hmm. and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 12 now. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. But he that is an hireling. He that is a what? He that is an hireling. But he that is an hireling. What is a hireling? A hireling is somebody that only works for money. You understand? Send forth spies. You understand? That they may take hold of his words, that he may be delivered, he may, that they might deliver him to the power of the governors. You understand? So those are hirelings. They are not here for the nation of Israel. They teach in strife and contention. Okay, go ahead. I lost my bearing, sir. Okay, John 10, verse 12 again. John chapter 10, verse 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, mm -hmm. whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. You see what he's saying? So the hireling, they don't care about the nation. They don't care about their people. Okay? So he says, seeth the wolf coming. The wolf in this instance represents problems. He sees problems coming. Guess what? The trials come, it says, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scatter the sheep. Because they don't care. You understand? So when you read in the book of Acts, when the apostle Paul was saying, I know after my departing shall grievous wolf enter in among you, not sparing the flock. That's the same thing that Christ is explaining here. He's just using, he's just speaking in parables. Okay, go ahead. The hireling fleeth, 
mm-hmm. because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. And careth not for the sheep. They don't care about the flock. Okay, they don't care. Watch this. Um, let's go back. Let's go back to Luke 20 verse 20. Luke chapter 20 verse 20. Mm-hmm. And they watched him and sent forth spies which should paint themselves just men mm-hmm. that they might take hold of his words that, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. You see that thing? Now, and the reason why they are doing this because it doesn't mean or like in the beginning they were like that. No, no, over time because spirits jump on them. Strife, envy jealousy you understand hatred so on and so forth fornication all of that all those unclean spirits they jump on you you understand and you because you are not doing anything about them jump up to verse 1 luke 20 verse 1 watch this luke chapter 20 verse 1 Mm -hmm. and it came to pass that on one of those days as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders. Okay, now this is Christ speaking. Christ is teaching. The scribes and Pharisees, they are coming up upon him. Read. And speak unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? Mm -hmm. Or who is he that gave thee this authority? You see what they are asking? They are questioning Christ's authority now. By what authority do you do these things? What, who gave you permission to be teaching and all of these things? That is what they are asking him. You know why? Because what he was teaching was teaching what? What was he teaching? The law. That is what Christ was teaching. So as he was teaching, they were getting cut. Okay? That's what we're reading here. So let's move on from the streets now to in the congregation. As the classes are coming out, because you don't want to repent, you are holding on to your sin because you are in love with the last that you are in, guess what happens? The more the classes come out, instead of them being edifying to you, you start to become offended by the classes that are coming out. And over time, you start to develop the spirit of what? Hatred. You start to develop the spirit of envy. You start to develop the spirit of jealousy and so on and so forth. Because your mind, you don't want to get your mind right. Okay? So over time, you start to develop these type of spirits, they jump on you. And you start to act some other way. And guess what? Even your countenance starts to change. It's like somebody, something is sucking the life out of you. And we can see it by the stuff, by the way that you look. You understand? And that is biblical. Watch this. Give me Sirach 37. I think it's in Ecclesiasticus. Let me look at it. Yes. Give me that in Sirach 37 verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, chapter 37. Uh Uh-huh. Chapter 37, 37, verse 17. Read. The countenance is a sign of changing of the heart. You see what he's saying? The countenance is a sign of the of changing of the heart. Because if your mind is changing, your face is going to show. So if your mind is changing for good, guess what you're gonna have? Your face is gonna do. Your face is gonna glow. If 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 you are applying the laws of God to your life, guess what you're gonna do? You're, you're going to glow. But if you are not, guess what's going to happen? It's going gonna, it's gonna to show that the demon, a demon has jumped on you. You understand? And with spiritual eyes, we can see that. Me, I'm good at that. I can see that. You understand? I can see that thing. Topic for another day. Watch this. Um, let's go back to Jude now. Jude. Jude verse 4. Read what you got. The book of Jude verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares Mm -hmm. who were were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Go ahead. And godly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So now what you want to notice here says who were before of all ordained to this condemnation, the condemnation, keep, keep, keep that in mind, is as ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. So these ungodly men, they are ordained for condemnation. 
Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 3, verse 12. Matthew chapter 3, verse 12. Matthew chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Whose fan is in his hand. And he will truly purge his, his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So now the wheat is the elect. Okay, this talk about Christ. He says, whose fan is in his hand because he's coming to bring destruction on this earth. You understand? He says he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. So the wheat is the elect of Israel. You understand? The one third that were destined to repent and receive the kingdom. Okay? It says what? It says, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. What is the chaff? Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 4. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Psalms, chapter 1, verse 4. Read that. Psalm chapter 1 verse 4. Mm -hmm. The ungodly are not so. You see but that I thing? like the chaff. The ungodly. The, the subject matter is about the ungodly. Read that again verse 4. Psalm chapter 1 verse 4. Mm -hmm. The ungodly are not so. But are like the chaff. Which the wind driveth away. You see that thing? The ungodly are not so. But are like the chaff. Which the wind driveth away. So the ungodly is the chaff that will be burned with unquenchable fire. Go back to Matthew 3, verse 12. So these ungodly is, the un is these ungodly men ordained to this condemnation that we read in the book of Jude, which, which John is explaining here in Matthew 3. Read Matthew 3, verse 12 again. Matthew chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will truly purge his floor. And gather his wheat into the corner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The chaff is the ungodly man crept in unawares. Ordained to this quenchable fire. Which is called condemnation in Jude verse 4. Okay. Go back to Jude now. Verse 4 again. Jude verse 4. Mm-hmm. For there are certain men crept in on a ways. Come on. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men, mm -hmm. turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord, the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So now these men, it says, these men and women as well, it says what? It says, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Give me the book of Titus 2 verse 11. Okay. Let's understand what it means when it says, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Let's understand what is grace. Okay. Titus 2 verse 11. Read that. Titus 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. For the grace of our God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, really? we should live soberly, righteously, uh -huh. and godly in this present world. So grace, the purpose of grace is to teach us to deny ungodliness. That's the point. To live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world before the Lord returns. You understand? So now, now we understand. It says, Jude says, turning the grace of our God. What is grace supposed to teach us? to deny ungodliness. That means we must apply God's commandments before the Lord returns because that's the grace period we've been allocated. You understand? But he's saying the grace, the time period that we've been allocated to get ourselves right. Some men and women, they are using that, that grace period to do what? They are using it for sexual deviancy. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 13. 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 13. No, no, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 13. 6, verse 13. 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Meats for the belly, and belly for the meats. 
Mm-hmm. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. You see that thing? It says, now the body is not for fornication. The body is not for fornication, the Lord is saying, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. So these bodies we got, they don't belong to us. You understand? This is a temporary real estate. Okay? These are temporary real estate that the Lord has given unto us to do his will. You understand? Read that again, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. Read. Meats for the belly and mm-hmm. belly for the meat. Come on. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication. Read. But for the Lord and the mm-hmm. Lord for the body. You see that thing? So, and because of that, jump up to verse 9. First Corinthians 6, verse 9 now. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Read. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous. Who's the unrighteous? Because God's, guess what? The unrighteous do unrighteous things. Watch this. Give me first John chapter 5. Okay, first John chapter 5 and verse 17. Read that. First John chapter 5 verse 17. Come on. All unrighteousness is sin. You see that thing? All unrighteousness is sin. Read. And there is a sin. And there is a sin not unto death. There is a sin not unto death. Meaning what? Not blaspheming the Holy Ghost. That's what it means. A sin not unto death. Go back to 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous is the sinners, those that do unrighteous things, meaning what? They break in the commandments of the Most High, using the body for fornication. Okay, go ahead. Be not deceived, Mm -hmm. neither fornicators. You see that thing? Neither, hold on, neither fornicators. Remember what we read in, in verse 13. It says, now the body is not for fornication. So now, here in verse 9, is saying, the unrighteous, has not in, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, meaning what? Sexual sins. Those that partake in sexual sins. Lasciviousness. Go ahead. Neither fornicators. Mm-hmm. No idolaters. No idolaters. No. Worship, worshiping of idols. Okay, read. No adulterers. No adulterers, come on. No effeminate. No effeminate, meaning what? Gay, you can't tell whether he's a man or a woman. Read. No abusers of themselves with mankind. That goes into what? That also goes into homosexuals. Abusers of themselves with mankind. Okay. Read on, verse 10. Verse 10. No thieves. No covetous. No drunkards, Mm -hmm. no revelers, no extortioners. Read. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. And such were some of you. Mm -hmm. Meaning some such is as such were some of us. Because we used to be in this world before. In this wicked and filthy life. Now the Lord, the grace of our Lord, the true gospel of Christ has come upon us. To understand that we must repent and keep God's commandments. Read. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You see that thing? Now we are justified now. And we are justified and sanctified. We are cleansed and what? Justified meaning what? We are forgiven of our sins. That's what that means, okay? So, go back to where he was at now. Um, Jump down to verse 13 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Meats for the belly, and belly for the meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Okay, watch this. Galatians 5 verse 19. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. You see that thing? He does that word right there, lasciviousness, because lasciviousness is not a regular Negro word, okay? So let's see what it means, lasciviousness. Let's see. Let's get the definition of lasciviousness. Okay, wait, wait. How come Google doesn't have this? Uh, yes. Okay, let me share my screen so we can see it. One second. Lasciviousness. Okay, read that. Lasciviousness definition, dictionary.com. The definition of lasciviousness from dictionary.com. Mm. Noun, unrestrained sexual behavior. You see that thing? Oh. Unrestrained, hold on. Unrestrained sexual behavior. Go ahead. Or a, or a habitual inclination to such behavior. Mm -hmm. Lustfulness. You see that thing? Lustfulness or a habitual inclination to such behavior, meaning what? Uncontrollable. De second definition, definition two. A lustful or lewd quality. Mm hmm the quality of arousing sexual desire. The quality of arousing sexual desire. Watch this. Mm. Go back to the first definition. Read that again. Unrestrained sexual behavior or habitual inclination to such behavior, lustfulness. When it says unrestrained sexual behavior, meaning what? You can help yourself. You cannot help yourself. One minute you're on YouTube, you understand? The next minute you are watching, because it's a process, you see. One minute you are, you, are, you, are, you are on the internet, and then this half-naked woman pops up on your left. Then you click it, or you say no, you close it. Then you are on YouTube. Before you know it, you are watching women twerking. You see what I'm saying? Unrestrained sexual behavior. Maybe that can be maybe the first month you're doing that. Next month is going to add, because... Now your mind is no longer satisfied by that. Now you move on to the next level. The next level. Before you know it, you are abusing yourself with mankind. Okay? Now let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, Galatians 5, verse 19 again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which mm -hmm. are these... Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. You see that thing? Adultery, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and what? Fornication. All of these, they fall under sexual sins. You understand? So the Lord is saying, we tend, we've turned the grace of our Lord into what? Lasciviousness. Because right now, if you look at the world now, the world is very sexual. It doesn't matter whether you're watching an ice cream ad, whether, you know, they are advertising a car you know there's a company called naked there's i think, I think it's an insurance company where you whether you, you on the freeway you are at the houghton station the name of the company is called naked and they say no get naked on your bike get naked on your table get naked like you see that thing 
That's some evil stuff right there. Subliminals, yeah. Iso is the damn devil. I'm telling you straight. You understand? It's everywhere. Like the amount of splash campaigns they'll be doing. So what is that? That's subliminal advertising. You understand? Because you just dismiss it. Ah, no, it's a joke. You laugh about it. No, no, it's in your mind. Programming. Subliminals. You understand? Okay, watch this. Um, give me, give me the book. Give me Galatians 5 verse 13 now. Galatians 5. Jump up to verse 13. Because remember what Jude said. Jude said, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness. You understand? Watch this. Galatians 5. And this is the main reason why that happens. Verse 13. Read it. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. Mm -hmm. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. You see that thing? But by love. Read. But by what? But by love, serve one another. Meaning what? Teach each other the commandments. So when he's saying, it says, it says what? It says, we've been called unto liberty. What is the liberty? Christ. The grace period that we've been given, that's the liberty. In this grace period that we have, we're supposed to learn how to apply what is written in the Bible. You understand? Then it says, only not use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Meaning what? Don't use grace as a, as a license to break God's laws. That's what he's saying. Don't use grace as a license to break the laws of the Most High. That's what the Apostle Paul is teaching us here. Okay? Him wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 26. We're still dealing with turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 26. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Come on. There's quieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, mm -hmm. defiling of souls, changing of kind, Read. disorder in marriages, mm -hmm. adultery, and shameless uncleanness. You see that thing? Lasciviousness is shameless uncleanness. It says disquieting of good men. Meaning what? Defiling, destroying, the, the defiling of good men. Meaning what? Because of sin. Because the sin will defile your spirit. Okay? Forgetfulness of good turns. The good turns is the laws of God. So now, when you do that sin, you forget the laws of the Most High. That's why it says forgetfulness of good turns. Defiling of souls. You see, your soul is on the line. Because that's what you are defiling. Changing of kind. That's why today men want to be women. They do surgery to change them, their sexes. You understand? I think there's an there's a issue of Time magazine when, um, I think it's a new issue of Time magazine, right? Uh, it's showing the cover of, of um, let me see, Time magazine uh, cover. Let's see. There's a Time magazine cover of, Let me see. There's a Time magazine cover of, of, the, of these LGBTs, okay? Not this one. There's another one. It's quite new, actually. It goes into this lesbian thing. I'm trying to find it. So, I can't find it now. But the point is, the cover of the magazine, right, it's time. So what is written is that is God something like, um, you know, I'm not a she or he, I'm an it. Yes, that's what they say. I'm not a he, I'm not a she, I'm an it. So like when you look at the mindset behind that, it shows really like right now we are under Sodom and Gomorrah. We are in those times right now. 
but the sins of America have not reached unto heaven just as yet. They're going to get to they're going to get to a point where they will reach unto heaven and the Most High God will bring the big boom on this earth. Okay? The great destruction, the nuclear missiles, so that this earth can be destroyed, the, the people in it. Okay? Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 26. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns. Come on. Defiling of souls, changing of kind. Mm -hmm. Disorder in marriages, adultery and shameless uncleanness. Adultery and shameless uncleanness, that's lasciviousness. Jump down to verse 29. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. For in so much as their trust is in idols which have no life, Read. though they swear falsely, yet they, have, yet they look not to be hurt. So what he's saying is, says, it says, for as in much as their trust is in idols, because all of these things that we're reading here, these are idols. You understand? Fornication, uncleanness, adultery, shameless uncleanness, defiling of souls, changing of kind, disorder in marriages. King Solomon is teaching us that in the midst of all of this is the worshiping of idols, because these are idols. You understand? It says, and because of this, it says, for as much as their trust is in idols, the reason why brothers and sisters do this is because they trust in idols, not in the Lord, which have no life. So when you do these things that we read in verse 26, you're not going to receive life. You're not going to get eternal life. You're going to get eternal damnation. You understand? It says, yet they look not to be heard, meaning you don't think that you're going to get heard behind this. That's what he's saying. Go back to Jude now. Jude and verse 5 now. Jude verse 5. The book of Jude, verse 5. Mm -hmm. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye, know, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. You see that thing? So now Jude is reminding us of what happened in the past. He says, listen, the Lord delivered us out of Egypt, okay? He says, and afterward destroyed them that believe not. The reason why we was destroyed in the wilderness, it was because we believed not. So it is today. You understand? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 6 verse 12, because the Lord is reminding us of the great deliverance that he did, it for, he did for us when we were delivered out of the, 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 the land of Egypt. You understand? Out of the house of bondage. Deuteronomy 6 verse 12. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 12. Mm-hmm. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Because we forgot. When we was in the wilderness, our forefathers, guess what happened? They forgot the, 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 the great deliverance that the Lord did. And they started to do what? To mama and complain because of what? Because they did not believe. Whenever you hear people, brothers and sisters be complaining, it's because they don't believe. You understand? And because of their unbelief, they have the spirit of what? They get offended when the scriptures come out because they don't believe nothing this Bible is saying. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians 10 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Neither let, let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. You see that thing? Then you read about that in Numbers 21, verse 6 down. Because guess what? We tempted the Lord, and the Lord sent fiery serpents among us, and those poisonous snakes, they were killing many of our people in the wilderness. Okay, come on. Neither murmur ye, as mm. some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. You see that thing? It says, neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. So our forefathers and foremothers was complaining in the wilderness to Moses and Aaron. You understand? But in their mind, they thought they were complaining to Moses and Aaron. No, no. They were complaining to the Lord. They were being ungrateful, unthankful. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers 11 and 1. Numbers chapter 11 verse 1. 
Don't think the Apostle Paul is referencing things for no reason. No, because those same generation that was back then, that same generation is back today. Numbers 11 and 1. Numbers chapter 11 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. You see that thing? And the, Hold on. When the people complained, they murmured. You understand? They were murmuring and complaining. It did what? It displeased the Lord. It displeased the Mosai. The Mosai was mad as hell about this thing. Go ahead. And the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled. Mm -hmm. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. You see what happens when we complain, when we murmur, when we backbite, backbiting, you understand? When we have, because the people that murmur and complain is the people that don't believe. That's the spirit behind the murmuring and the complaining is lack of unbelief. You understand? So it says the Lord heard it and his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them. That's what the Lord does. You're going to have problems in your life when you do what? When you don't complain because you are hiding your complaint behind the fact that you're, the, the reason why you're complaining was hiding behind the complaint is the spirit of unbelief. That's the point. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 20. Deuteronomy 32 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Mm -hmm. Children in whom is no faith. You see that thing? Children in whom is no faith. Where a forward generation, the Lord is saying, children in whom is no faith. We are faithless. We don't have faith, the Lord is saying. Watch this. Give me Hebrews chapter 3 verse 16. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For some, when they when they had heard, did provoke, how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. You see what he's saying? It says, those that had the word that Moses was teaching, some of them, they were provoked to what? To repent, to get themselves right. But it says, how be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, meaning not all of them that came out of Egypt, they were, got delivered into the promised land. You understand? It was only Joshua and Caleb that got delivered into the promised land. The rest was put to death. The sisters, none of them make it out, made it into the, into the promised land. It was only the children. You understand? Read. Verse 17. But with whom was he grieved for 40 years? But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Mm -hmm. Was it not them that had sinned? Whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Whose dead bodies fell in the wilderness? Because guess what? We was grieving Moses in the wilderness. Our forefathers was doing that. Giving Moses hell. Okay. In the wilderness. It says whose carcasses, meaning whose bodies, fell in the wilderness. They dropped dead. Read. Come and on. to whom like swear he, verse 18, mm -hmm. and to whom swear he, that they should not enter into his rest, but to, who, but to them that believe not. You see that thing? So those that entered into his rest is those that believed. Those that did not believe they didn't enter into his rest. What was the rest back then? It was the, the promised land. The promised land was the rest because we were just coming out of captivity. You understand? We got delivered out of Egypt. So 40 years were in the wilderness to prepare to go into the promised land. Those that didn't make it into the promised land is because of what? They did not believe. Okay, come on. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. You see what he's saying? They could not enter in because of unbelief. Now, next chapter, verse 1. Hebrews 4, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to, to come short of it. 
So this promise now, what is this promise talking about? Give me that in Luke. Okay, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 and verse 71. Luke chapter 1 verse 71. Mm -hmm. That we should be saved from our enemies and from all and from the hand of all that hate us. You see that thing? This is the promise right here. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Our enemies is those that put us in slavery, that colonized us, that took our land, they are eating our resources and stealing them. You understand? And leaving our countries in, in, in an impoverished state. You understand? And they are still doing it right now. Go ahead. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers mm -hmm. and to remember his holy covenant. So the mercy that was promised to our forefathers is so that he will not forsake his seed, which is us today. Read. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. You see that thing? Because this is based on the covenant that he made with our forefather Abraham, then with Isaac, then with Jacob. Read that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might mm -hmm. serve him without fear. You see that thing? Because now that's when we enter into that rest now. Because back then the rest was what? When we came out of Egypt, then we're in the wilderness, then we entered into the promised land. And for 40, for 80 years, we ruled all nations on earth. We had the kingdom of heaven under King David and King Solomon. So now, from that time, we've been in captivities ever since. Now, after Christ came, you understand, after Christ died for us, okay, now we have, a, we, have, we have a chance to get to enter into that rest. That chance that has been given to us is the grace period to keep the commandments of God and to rehearse the righteous acts that are written in this book, the dietary law, the ceremonial law, you understand, the, um, the civil, the moral law, okay? so on and so forth. Okay, let's go back. Go back to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of, our, of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. You see that thing? So right now, don't use the grace period as license to sin. Use the grace period to get yourself together so that you don't come short of entering into the rest that's coming. You understand? Read. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Mm -hmm. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with the faith, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Because guess what? The, the, the gospel was preached to them, our forefathers in the wilderness. Just like the gospel is being preached to us today. Just like the gospel was being preached to the Hebrews at this time period that the apostle Paul wrote this. But he's saying, he says what? But the word preached did not profit them, not mixed with faith in them that heard it. Meaning what? It didn't profit them because they didn't have faith. They didn't believe what was being taught to them. Because the, the problem with our forefathers in the world and foremothers is because yes, they had the word being taught to them, but they didn't believe. They didn't have faith. Okay? And that's why they did not make it into that rest. They didn't enter in. Okay, come on. Verse 3. Verse 3. For we which have, been, which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Meaning what? This thing is already written that it, this, guess what? The remnant of Israel, the one third will enter into the rest. The rest are going to be put to death. That's what he's saying. That's why it says, which, from the works, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Give me that in uh, Isaiah 46 verse 10. Okay. This, was, this is written already, declared already. Okay. Right now we are just characters in this great movie that has ever been written on this earth. We are the main characters of the movie. Okay? Isaiah 46 verse 10. Read that. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Declaring the end from the beginning. You see that? And from, ancient, and from ancient times, 
the things that are not yet done, oui. saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. You see that? Declaring the end from the beginning, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. What is written will come to pass. What is written, some of it has already come to pass already, and now it's history. But was, there are some prophecies that are still yet to be fulfilled. And some, prophecy has, some prophecies are being fulfilled right now. You understand? The looting, the stealing, the destroying of things, it's all in the Bible. Okay? Lord's will, I'm going to go over, or, or I'm going to go into that class is sometimes in the near, very near future. Okay? Now let's go back. First Corinthians now, chapter 10, read verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Now all these things happen unto them for, for examples. For example, meaning for an example. These things that we, we, we were reading about, you understand, in the book of Hebrews and so forth, these things, they happen unto us for an example. Don't follow that poor example of our forefathers in the wilderness. That's what he's saying. Read that again, verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our, for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now that's heavy right there. It says, oh, hold on. Okay. Um, it says, and they are written for our admonition, meaning what? For our warning. These things are written for, to warn us. That don't follow the same poor example that our forefathers followed because they moved to the spirit of unbelief and they didn't enter into the rest. You understand? So now it says, upon whom, the whom is us, upon whom the ends of the world are come. What is he saying? Listen, the second coming of the Lord, the chances of us seeing it in our lifetime right now, they are quite high. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. A couple of minutes before midnight, you understand? Before the big boom. Understand that. So we are almost at the end of this thing. We are really at the end right now. You need to understand where we are at in prophecy. Okay? Slavery has happened. We went into slavery. We're on ships. That The things that Moses has written, they've already happened. Now we are in the prophecy where the nation of Israel is waking up. Once the 144,000 is sealed, it's time to go home. You understand? So as we are teaching the gospel, we want to seal the 144,000 with the laws of God. Meaning what? 12,000 men from each tribe must repent and keep the commandments of the Most High, including the one third, because the 144,000 is part of the one third. Once that is sealed, it's time to go home. So we don't know where we add in terms of out of the 144,000, we don't know how many is left and how far we've gone already. We don't know. So guess what? Any time is tea time. So don't sleep. Okay? Don't be sleepy. Watch this. Uh, give me Jude now, verse 16. Jude, verse 16. Jude, verse 16. Mm -hmm. These are murmurs, complainers, Walking after their own lusts, mm -hmm. and their and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Read verse sixteen again. Jude verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. These are murmurs, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons. In admiration because of advantage. So now he's saying these are mammas complainers. These are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts. The reason why somebody complain, they mama and they complain, is because of lust that is in them. That's what the Lord is saying. Because to mama, to mama and complain, right? It also goes into what? When you're supposed to be doing the work of the Lord, you're supposed to apply the commandments. And the, it, it feels like work to you. It's just such, it's, it's like, is this huge burden that is sitting on your shoulder? Guess what? You are a mamara and you are a complainer. You are part of this list. 
when it feels like you have to, it always seems like, yo, I'd rather do everything else, but sit down and study the scriptures and make notes and apply. When you feel like that, you are part of this list. Do you understand? Because you don't have the spirit of joy to do this. It always just feels like it's, a, it's work. So now guess what happens? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. Um, Ecclesiasticus chapter, I believe it's 32. Is it 32? Mm. Hold on a second. Yeah, I believe it's 32. Let me see. It's not part of my notes. Just popped into my head. So bear with me, brothers and sisters. Mm. I know it's in the it is in it it's in it Ecclesiasticus, right? Let me see. Hold on a second. Yes, Sarak Sarak six, read verse eighteen. Ecclesiasticus chapter six, verse eighteen. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter six, verse eighteen. Mm -hmm. My son. Gather instruction from thy youth up. Uh -huh. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. You see that thing? It says, gather instruction from thy youth up. Meaning when you come into this truth, make sure you learn, you study, you ask questions, you apply yourself. It says, so shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. Meaning that wisdom that you learn from your youth up is going to sustain you from your, until your old age. But in order for that sustainability to occur, you need to keep applying the laws of God continually okay read verse 19 mm -hmm. come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth and wait for her good fruit for thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her but thou shalt but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon so now this is talking about the subject matter here is wisdom the instruction of wisdom so it says, come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth. Somebody that is plowing, somebody that is sowing is somebody that is laboring, is somebody that is putting in works. Somebody that is putting in the work of the law, is putting in the work, is working in the vineyard. You understand? Because they want us to come out of this place. It says, for though, it says, for thou shalt, for, for, it says what? For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her but thou shalt eat of the fruit right soon. Do you see that thing? The kingdom is talking about that. Next verse, watch this now. Verse 20, mm -hmm. she is very unpleasant to the unlearned. Stop right there. You see that thing? This is wisdom now. It says wisdom is very, it's not just unpleasant, it's very unpleasant to the unlearned. The unlearned is those that don't want to apply what is written. They know the scriptures, but they don't want to fight to overcome. Those are the unlearned. They know all these scriptures, but they don't want to do nothing about what they know. You see what I'm saying? So it says, she's very unpleasant to the unwise. So guess what? Wisdom will be very unpleasant to you because you don't, you don't, you're not coming with the spirit of joy. It feels like work. Guess what? The wisdom will be heavy. More, wisdom is more heavier than when you, are un, when you don't come you don't come a hundred percent. Okay, come on. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. You see that thing? If you don't have understanding, you're not going to remain. Wisdom will not remain with you. How do you get understanding? Sarah 21 verse 11 real quick. Give me that. This is, how you get, this is how you get understanding of the Bible. The Bible is the only book on the planet Earth that in order for you to understand what he's saying, you must do what it says. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes 21 verse 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. Read. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. He that, he that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. That's how you get understanding. You keep God's commandments. You apply. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. You apply all of that. Guess what? The dress code, the way you dress, what you eat, the, the high holidays you're supposed to celebrate in the Bible. When you do that, guess what? You will get understanding of this Bible. 
Go back to Sirach 6 now. Verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 21. Mm -hmm. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial, mm. and he will cast her from, the, from him ere it be long. You see that thing? It says, she will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial. Meaning wisdom will be sitting upon you like a stone, a heavy stone of trial. It says, he will cast thee, it says, he will cast, he will cast her from him before. A e means before. E-R-E -E means before. A e it belong, before it belong, meaning quickly. So when you don't, when you, when you keep complaining, is because you are walking after your own ungodly lusts. And those lusts, because you don't want to repent from them, Guess what's going to happen? Wisdom will be very unpleasant to you. It will be upon you as a what? As a mighty stone of trial. That's what will happen. Okay? Go back to Jude now. Verse 16. The book of Jude, verse 16. Mm -hmm. These are murmurers, and these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So now he's saying, because of walking after their own lusts. Give me that in First John 2 verse 15. Walking after their own lust. First John chapter 2. Let's start at verse 15. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, Mm -hmm. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So now John is going to tell you what the things that are in the world. He says, don't love the world, neither the things that are in the world. He's going to tell you what is in the world, the things that you must not love. Verse 16 now, come on. For all that is in the world, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh. You see that thing? The, the, the lust of the flesh. Because your flesh be lusting after things, whether it's a car fame one of them don't get a car okay but some people let's say you've got a hmm, you've got a family of eight you buy a two-seater who does that well that's last okay so that's what we're reading here it says the lust of the flesh fornication lasciviousness uncleanness evil concupiscence all the sexual sins that we'll be going over Yes, that's the lust of the flesh. Go ahead. And the lust, and the lust of the eyes. And the lust of the eyes, the things you see with your eyes. You understand? Money, fame. You understand? The lust of the eyes. Big booty women. The lust of the eyes. Go ahead. And the pride of life. The pride of life, because you're now going outside of God's commandments to, to fulfill the lust of your flesh and the lust of your eyes. Read. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see that thing? Is not of the Father, but is of the world. Watch this. Um, go back to Jude, verse 16. I'm almost done. The book of Jude, verse 16. Read. These are murmurers and complainers. Come on. Walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. You see that part right there when it says, uh, and it says, their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. This one right here is the murmurers and the complainers that walk after their own lust is what? He says they have men's admiration. They admire, they, they, they admire men because of the advantage they, they think they have with those men. That's the point. That's why cliques in the congregation, listen, don't have cliques in the congregation. You understand? Because going back to Thomas O'Neill, because I have to go back to that black ashy demon. That black ashy demon, guess what he had? His, his last was what? His last was to overthrow Fred Hampton. You see that thing? That was his last. 
he didn't like he did he did not he was an en, he was an enemy to progress that was his problem so now he what he had men's persons in admiration he admired fred hampton because of advantage the advantage that he had with him meaning what no i know him you know i i'm close to him and so forth yes don't think i'm not seeing these things i'm watching these things okay i'm watching these things the spirit of the most high is going to be doing some cleaning understand that watch this give me the book of wisdom of solomon chapter 1 verse 8 wisdom of solomon chapter 1 and verse 8 Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. Really? Neither shall vengeance, neither shall vengeance, when it punisheth, pass by him. You see what he's saying? Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things. Remember, it says, um, un the unri un unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the same thing here. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid neither shall vengeance when it punisheth pass by him meaning what you're not going to escape if you don't repent go ahead for inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly the ungodly the chaff that we read about in matthew 3 verse 12 in, in psalms chapter 1 verse 4 that will be given to damnation of unquenchable fire read and the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. You see that thing? The sound, meaning it's heard, of his words shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. Go ahead. For the ear of jealousy heareth all things. Mm -hmm. and, the no and the noise of memories is not hid. You see that thing? The ear of jealousy heareth all things. And the noise of memories is not hid. So that's why it says, the, it says what? It says, the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. The ear of jealousy heareth all things. Because they are, remember what we read in, in Luke chapter 9 verse 44. It said, let these words be sunk in your spirit. Which words? The words of the Most High, the commandments. If the commandments are sunk in your spirit, your ear is not going to be open to jealousy. Your ear is not going to be open to murmuring and complaining. Your ear is not going to be open to strife and envy. Your ear is not going to be open to that. Your spiritual ear will hear spiritual things, which is the laws of God. But because you have fleshly ears, you're going to hear fleshly things. And those fleshly things will defile your soul. Understand that. Read verse 10 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 10. Go ahead. For the ear of jealousy heareth all things, mm -hmm. and the noise of memories is not hid. Next verse, come on. Therefore, beware of memory. You see what he's which saying? Which is unprofitable. That, hold on. Therefore, because the, everything that I just said, that's what he's saying in the spirit of Christ. Everything that we just read is, therefore, beware of memory. What is that called? That's a commandment. You understand? What is he saying? Thou shalt not murmur. Thou shalt not be complaining. Read. Therefore, beware of memory, which is unprofitable, uh -huh. and refrain your tongue from backbiting. Meaning what? Discipline your mouth. Discipline your tongue, he's saying. Because your tongue, the things that your tongue says is based on the things that are in your thoughts. Because your thoughts, they don't have a what? Your thoughts don't have the laws of God chastising them that's the point you understand watch mm -hmm. this we coming back here give me that in ecclesiasticus ecclesiasticus chapter mm, let me see sirach chapter 22 give me ecclesiasticus 22 verse 27 watch this ecclesiasticus chapter 22 verse 27 mm -hmm. Who shall set a watch before my mouth? You see that thing? Who? Who shall set a watch before my mouth? The Lord. You understand? The Lord is the one that is going to set a watch over your mouth. What is the watch? The laws of God. 
The most high God is the one that will set the laws of God, these laws over your mouth. To what? To control and discipline your tongue. Go ahead. And the seal of wisdom upon my lips. You see that thing? That seal of wisdom is what? The seal of wisdom is the laws of God. Discretion. Go ahead. That I fall not suddenly by them. Mm -hmm. And that my tongue destroy me not. Meaning your own tongue will destroy you. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Because your, what, the things that your tongue says is based on the things that are in your mind. Because your tongue don't think, your, but your mind does. Your mind is the one that's telling your tongue to move, to, to spew out what? Evil things. Okay? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 now. Verse 11 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Therefore, beware of memory, which is unprofitable. And refrain your tongue from backbiting. Come on. For there is no word so secret that shall that shall go for naught. And the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. And the mouth that speaketh lies slayeth the soul. So he's saying, for there is no word so secret that shall not go for naught. We was going over yesterday that the, every thought, the most said, no, no thought escapes him. No thought escapes the most high. So guess what? We have to sit down and examine ourselves and apply what is written. All the scriptures that are coming out, guess what? Is for your edification so you can apply. All of us have to apply what, what, what is coming out right now. Understand that. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me the book of John, chapter 6, verse 41. Because it says, therefore, beware of mammary. Okay? John 6, verse 41. John chapter 6, verse 41. Come on. The Jews then murmured at him because mm -hmm. he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. So our forefathers was murmuring during the time when Christ walked the earth. Is that the Jews murmured, why? Because he said, I is the bread which came down from heaven. So they didn't understand what he was saying. And because they did not understand they got offended, and that hence the complaining. So what, what, what is the secret source for you to understand? You keep the commandments. So because they didn't keep the commandments, they didn't understand half the things that Christ was saying. So because they didn't understand, because they didn't keep the laws, that's why they were always offended, and which caused them to complain and murmur. Same thing happening in the wilderness. It was happening during the time of Christ, and it's happening today, 2021. Okay? Read verse 43 now. Come on. Verse 43. Mm -hmm. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. That's the same thing that King Solomon said. He says, Beware of memory. Christ is saying the same thing. Therefore, murmur ye not amongst yourselves. Okay, jump down to verse 51. Verse 51. Read. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh which i will give for the life of the world so he's speaking in parables but he's speaking about himself what he will do for the 12 tribes of israel so our forefathers did not understand what he was saying and because they did not understand we read what what how do you get understanding you keep the laws you understand read the jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Read. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Read. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Because we are in the last days right now. He will raise him up in the last days. That's what the Lord is raising us up right now. Go ahead. For my flesh is meat indeed. Mm -hmm. And my blood is drink indeed. Come on. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. 
so he's speaking in parables here. He that eat my flesh and drink my blood. So they didn't understand what Christ was saying. You understand? Read. As the living Father had sent me, and I live by the Father, mm -hmm. so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Because meaning what? You must study the scriptures because Christ says, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. So for you to eat Christ, meaning his flesh, talk about he, this Bible, you must learn this Bible. You understand? The blood it goes into what? The sacrifice that he made, you must accept that sacrifice that he made and keep the commandment under the sacrifice that he made, which is himself. Read. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Go ahead. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. You see that? He said, these things said he in the synagogues as he taught. Because this is how Christ taught. Because he knew many people don't believe anyway. I'm going to teach like this. Those, those, those few people that are supposed to hear this, they will hear this and they will apply it. Okay, go ahead. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is an hard saying. Who can hear it? You see that thing? This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? Weak meaning what? Our spiritual ears are not open to understand what he's saying. Okay, go ahead. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? You see that thing? He says he knew in himself that, guess what? Because he could read their thoughts. He was able to read their thoughts. He knew that, guess what? They are complaining. You understand? Why? Because they don't believe nothing he's saying. That's why they were offended by what he was saying. You understand? Read verse 63 now. Come on. Verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Uh -huh. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Because you see, you see the, the importance of what he's saying right here now? It says, this is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. What was he teaching them? You must repent, keep the commandments in order for you to understand the things I'm saying. That's what he's saying right there. Why do you think they, were, they kept getting offended over and over? Because there was not keeping, there was not sincere. They did not believe. That's why he kept saying, oh, faith, oh, oh faithless and perverse generation, how long must I suffer you? How long shall I be among you? You understand? Because our forefathers did not believe none of the scriptures were saying. They, didn't have, they did not have faith. Okay? Come on. Verse 64. Read. But there are some of you that believe not. You see that thing? That's the reason why they were murmuring and complaining and they were being offended. Because they did not understand. Why didn't they understand? Because of what? Lack of application of God's laws. It was back then, so it is today. Read. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not mm -hmm. and who should betray him. You see that thing? So the people that complain is the people that don't believe. And those are the people that will betray you. That's what Christ is saying. Read again. John chapter 6, verse 64. Go ahead. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. Mm -hmm. And who should betray him? Go ahead. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my father. You see that thing? Meaning those that are, are those that are approved, they are going to show. And those that are just there, they are also going to show. They're going to they're gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Go ahead. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. You see that thing? They left, they left Christ. Many of the disciples, it says many of his disciples went back. Where did they go back to? Into the, in the world. They went back into the world and walked no more with him because they didn't believe this. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? You see what he's saying? He's not worried about the one that left. 
He's asking the ones that remain. Are you going to go too? Okay, go ahead. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? That was the words of eternal life. Because they believe this thing. The ones that are says, the apostle Peter and I say, listen, you have the, the words of eternal life. Where are we going to go? Go ahead. And we believe and are sure that you that, see that would... thing? We believe and are sure. We believe and are sure. Read. We believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, mm -hmm. that thou art that Christ, Read. the Son of the living God. Go ahead. Jesus answered him, Have I not chosen you, twelve? And one of you is, the, is a devil? Read that again. Read it right, verse 70. Come on. John chapter 6, verse 70. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered him, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil? He says, Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is the devil, the Bible speaks of, a black ashy demon, Thomas O'Neill. You understand? Because he knew that one of them is the devil, just like he knew many of them that went back into the world and walked no more with him. He knew that they didn't believe. You understand? Read. He spake of Judas Iscariot, Thomas the son of Simon. Read. Uh, this Judas Iscariot, that's Thomas O'Neill. Read. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. You see that thing right there? Because guess what? That's what it says. Go back to Acts. We're going to close out with this. Acts chapter 20. Okay. Verse 30. Because it says he was one of the twelve. He was one of the brothers. He was among us. You see that thing? Read it. Acts 20, verse 30. Read that. Acts chapter 20, verse 30. Go ahead. Also of your own self shall men arise, mm -hmm. speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. You see what he's saying? He says, also of your own selves, because Judas was one of them. He was one of the twelve. Judas was raised in the dead. He had spiritual powers. But he didn't believe. He didn't believe. You understand? He did not believe nothing he was doing. So which means Judas was raising the dead. You understand? He was, he was healing the lepers. He was healing the people with leprosy. You understand? All of that. Excuse me. He was walking among Christ. But he didn't believe. That's why it says... Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Hmm. Go ahead, verse 31. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So the Apostle Paul says he was warning the churches for three years, night and day, about this thing right here, about, about um, ungodly men crept in unawares to spy out our liberty, to bring us again into bondage. You see that thing? I'm going to end the class right there. Okay. Um, let's break bread. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh, 
damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that. All praise to the Most High.